All right. Hello. Welcome to this week's Unwrapped. I'm Sari Kimball. I'm the creator of Food Business Success, and I help people bring their amazing, delicious, handmade product to, to market, right? To come from kitchen and go into market wherever that is. And so today I am talking about something that's super popular <laughs> with a lot of people that I work with, which is cottage food. So if you have an idea and you want to get started out of your home kitchen, working from home, creating and selling it, uh, using your home kitchen, cottage food may be a great, uh, a great option for you. So I would love for you to like, comment below. Let me know what you make uh, it, down below in the comments. So comment, like this video, and subscribe to this channel. On today's video, I'm going to give you five steps on how to launch uh, that cottage food business, right? So if you're thinking, I do want to um, get going, let me just make sure this is up high enough. Hopefully that's, you guys can hear me okay. Uh, so if you're thinking about bringing a business from your home and you want to get started the simplest way, right? Like what I love about cottage food and I, not all products are going to qualify for this, but one thing I love about it is it allows you to just kind of tiptoe into entrepreneurship, right? To see if this is really for you and to test it out, prove the concept, see if there is a market for what you want to create. And not everybody needs to have a giant business or wants to have that. I'm actually not an advocate for everybody trying to be that next big thing, right? The next big Justin's or, um, in, you know, Kind Bar, anything like that, right? I don't actually think that's meant for everybody, but there is so much to value of trying out entrepreneurship. It's going to help you grow and expand and the connections that come from that. And it's possible to create a business that you really love using the cottage food model. And uh, on this week's podcast, I believe it was episode um, 131, um, I interviewed uh, Lisa Kiverist, uh, who is co-author of a great book called Handmade for Sale. And um, so you can definitely listen to a little bit more about cottage food. That's a great resource to go to as well. Okay. So five steps right? On how to actually launch this cottage food business, things that you need to do to get started. So at this point, all 50 states, including uh, the District of Columbia, do have some form of cottage food laws on the books, right? And so to, to describe exactly what that means, what the definition is, is that it allows residents of a specific state to sell shelf-stable, non-potentially hazardous products, food products, specifically directly to a consumer, directly to your customer. So that's how it's defined generally for most states, okay? Now, each state is going to have limitations. Some are much more... Um, wide, right? They're, uh, they do a lot more. For instance, in West Virginia, I work with some folks there that um, you can actually do some forms of wholesale through cottage food. But generally, most cottage food limits you to farmer's markets, pickup delivery, or online within your state. So that is generally the way that cottage food laws are written. And then the products that you're allowed, again, are going to de be dependent on your state. Um, some are much broader and some are much tighter, but generally it's going to be baked goods, spices, teas, coffees. Somebody had, there was some confusion clarification about when I say beverages, I was really meaning um, for cottage food that you could do coffee, you could do tea, like tea leaves, you could do mixes. You can't actually, to my knowledge, under cottage food for most states or all states, you can't actually do liquid forms of those beverages. So just to clarify that. But there are quite a few products allowed 
Uh, mixes, uh, flowers, that kind of thing is another big one. Candies, jams, um, and then a lot of them have pickles, so some acidified products. The best resource is David Craybill's. I've had him on the podcast as well. David Craybill has a great website called forager.com, and so you'll be able to find out your state specifically, and it has all the information for each state. So it's a great resource. So that's the first thing. Research what your state allows, how broad it is, right? There are some states that don't allow any e-commerce. It's just farmer's markets, like physically (laughs) seeing people. So just make sure you're operating within the rules of your particular state And then you'll want to find out what those licensing requirements are. A lot of times it involves taking a food safety course, and then um, there may be an application process. Sometimes uh, I've worked with a client in Pennsylvania. They had to do, um, actually had to do an inspection. A lot of times you don't. So it just kind of depends on your state. So find out exactly what is allowed, if your product fits in that, and then what it is you need to do to get that to operate under that state. All right. So that's the first thing. And then uh, number two is once you've confirmed all of that good stuff, um, I want you to decide on a business model, at least something to start. It doesn't have to be the final business model, but decide. And here's what a business model, this is not some fancy giant (laughs) book, right? That you're going to write and then set on a shelf. I don't need it to be that fancy. It's literally this. It's what products am I selling? Sizes, flavors, how many, right? Um, how many blends or anything like that? So what are your product products? What's the mix of products? How are you going to price them so that you actually are making money, right? So uh, products, price, where are you going to sell them? So who's your customer? Where are you going to sell them, right? Are you going to go to farmer's markets? If so, which ones? Are you going to go online? Are you going to um, do pickup, delivery? So make decisions about that. And then you just need a form, like how are people going to pay you, right? It could be as simple as Venmo, or you could set up a Shopify website, have a chip reader, right? Like you could just do cash. Like there's lots of ways, but you need a way to take payment. Okay. So that's number two, deciding on your business model. And that's as simple as that, right? That's really for cottage food. That's where you need to start. Okay. And then number three, uh, set up your business for profit and to be legal, right? And not only legal as far as licensing goes, but legal as far as taxing and all of that stuff, right? Business licenses. Now, typically you shouldn't have to get a traditional business license. You don't need a commercial kitchen. You're not, you don't need like a manufacturing license. But in this, what I mean is um, setting up your business foundation. You might want to do an LLC. There's kind of different things that fall under that. You might need to get insurance. You might need to, um, yeah, do your LLC paperwork, get a business uh, banking account. So some of those uh, business foundations that setting up the formation of your business, um, your cost of goods sold. So how are you going to make money, right? And really understanding that piece of it. Setting up for taxes, whether it's sales tax that you need to pay out or paying taxes to the IRS, right, on any profit. And then lastly, that you're actually setting up your business for profit. So I am actually teaching a workshop for the Home-Based Food Entrepreneur Virtual Conference that if you're listening to this uh, in kind of real time, it's on April 10th through the 13th, 2023. And I'm doing a whole workshop on setting up your business to run it like a boss from that aspect, the business setup, the taxes, the cogs, and setting it up for profit. Because I guarantee you, if you don't set this up to make some profit at the beginning, you're not going to stick with this very long. Doing a business that just sucks everything from you and leaves you with nothing, you will not want to do this for very long. I promise you. So 
to get to that conference, I did put the link down in the description of this video. And I'm also doing a giveaway for eight tickets. I'm a sponsor. Food Business Success is a sponsor of the event as well as I'm presenting. So there is a link if you're listening in real time to get signed up to enter to win uh, a virtual, a ticket to attend that virtually. And the winner will be announced on March 28th, 2023. So grab that link uh, down below. And then, so that's the third thing, setting up your business to be legal and to be profitable. And then the fourth thing is you're going to want to go ahead and apply for those farmers markets, or you want to go ahead and set up your website. I highly recommend Shopify. I have some, a free package where I can just set up your development account on Shopify so that you don't have to do that whole two week trial nonsense. You can take as long as you want. Or I have like a little DIY package that I offer where we will set it up together or I have a done for you package. So if you're curious about that, you can go to foodbizsuccess.com forward slash Shopify. That is the, the platform that I highly recommend and set everybody else, set all everybody up on or transfer their websites over from the other ones. So go ahead and apply, get that website set up. How are you going to start doing business and then have that form of payment, right? How are people actually going to pay you? And then last, number five, go make your product. Decide on packaging, decide, like create your label. It can be really simple. You can just go to canva.com and create a simple label there, making sure that you are, Cottage Foods going to have very specific things that need to be on that label, right? So making sure you have everything on there. And then don't worry too much about getting a fancy logo and all of the things. Cottage Food is a beautiful, wonderful system that allows you to just get it out there to test it. And then you can always make it better, right? That's the beauty of entrepreneurship. Just get started. I think a lot of people hold themselves back. It's like, I got to have this and I got to have the website and all of these cool marketing materials and the logo and all the things. I am a big fan of B minus work. Just get it out there, get it done, and then you can always make it better. I promise you wherever you start, even if you invested $5,000 in working with a graphic designer at the beginning, in a year or two, you're going to want to change it anyway. So just get going. Um, don't overthink it. And so go ahead and make label package, get that product made and go start selling. You can turn it on so quickly with cottage food, go test it out, see how it rolls, and then you'll make changes. And of course, if you want more support, food business success is perfect for you guys starting uh, and growing your cottage food business. Uh, the community inside fuel is spectacular. Uh, is one of my favorite places to be. We answer all your questions on group coaching calls and you're going to get all of my tools, all of my resources. And one of the most important ones is that cost of goods sold worksheet that'll really help you understand how you are making money. As a business, right? And this is what that workshop is all about for the cottage food event is a business by definition is seeking to earn a profit. Right. And so we want to set things up from the beginning. Like I said, you will want to keep going. You'll feel excited, more motivated if money is coming into your life and it's not just all going out, out, out. So those are the five things, five steps that you need to take to go start that cottage food business, being able to make, to package everything from home. So you don't have that large overhead. You can just get started right away. Uh, go out and test it in your local area. Uh, you guys probably know I own a farmer's market and I love working with brand new cottage food folks. Um, it's so fun to watch them evolve, right, from their very first market as they grow and they they figure things out and their marketing gets a little bit better. It's just so fun for me. And I love supporting you guys who are starting cottage food businesses. I think it's a really important piece of creating more transparency and more access to local food to um and just more diverse food, right? And I just I love it so much. <laughs> I know not everybody can start out that way, nor do farmers markets work in everybody's schedule, 
But for those of uh, you guys that can, I highly, highly recommend it. So step one is to verify your products, check out what your state offers, what you need to do to, uh, to get ready to go under cottage food. So forager.com is a great place to get started. Then you're going to decide on your business model, and that is what products you're making, where are you making that, or sorry, where are you selling them, what are you pricing them at, and then how are you taking people's money, right? How are you exchanging value? Uh, number three, you're going to set up a business that's legal, and we're setting it up for profit. We're actually prioritizing profit from the beginning. And like I said, I will be sharing that workshop uh, on that virtual conference. You can uh, enter to win one of eight tickets down below. And then uh, you will also, step four is go ahead and apply for the markets or get your website set up or both. And then number five is just go make your product and go get out there. Start selling. Start telling people what you have. And remember that you're not taking anybody's money. It's an exchange of value People are delighted to give you their money in exchange for an amazing, delicious product. All right. I hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for listening. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Let me know what you make. And uh, go get yourself entered to win. I would love to see you over at that virtual conference. All right. Until next time, have an amazing week.